Hey, welcome to Digi Pro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson, and here we work smarter, not harder, which is why today I'm going to talk to you about the Blackmagic Studio Camera and which is the best lens or lenses to use with it. Let's find out. Now that you've decided to get stuck in with one of the Blackmagic Studio Cameras, you're probably wondering which is the best lens to use from it because there are so many Micro Four Thirds lenses to choose from. I've been using them since about 2017 and I have some good insight and recommendations that will ultimately result in a better studio experience for you. If you're still not sure whether to get a Blackmagic Studio camera, I'm not saying whether you should or you shouldn't, but I've got an article on the very same thing right up there. Now I should mention all the lenses that I'm going to talk to you about today are in the description below. It's always quite daunting when trying to decide on lens options for your camera. It's possibly even more daunting with the Blackmagic Studio camera because it has a micro four thirds lens mount and that means you can pretty much put any lens you like on this camera with a lens mount adapter. So do you go with the kit you already own and trust or do you go out and buy something new specific for the camera? There are pros and cons to this and I ended up doing both for a while. Now, as every videographer knows, the glass that's in front of your camera comes first and the body comes second. Camera bodies get updated all the time, but your glass, your lenses, they could be with you for a lifetime. And so it's worth putting the investment into that glass ahead of putting the investment into the camera body, which makes choosing the right lens an even more important decision. Back in 2017, I ran a small to medium sized video production department for an online media publisher. And we had an in-house studio set up that was made for TV quality programming, live streaming to social media platforms and live events as well. So it, it really did encompass a lot here. Connected to the gallery, I had three Blackmagic Studio 4K cameras and a couple of Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 4.6Ks as well. Now studio work wasn't the only area that these lenses would be used because we also had an on location team as well and they would also need lenses to go with those. Now this was fine for a while because studio work only accounted for maybe a fifth of the overall shooting throughout the week. As things got bigger, as we got more successful, that became more of a headache. Lenses were being requested for studio and location work at the same time, all the time. So I had some choices to make. I needed to get some lenses that were just for the studio cameras. And there was a very important factor in my decision-making process. And that's to do with the crop factor of the Micro Four Thirds cameras. You see, the stated focal length on any lens that you put on a Micro Four Thirds camera has a two times crop factor compared to a full frame camera. So if you have a 35 to 100 millimeter micro four thirds lens, putting that on a micro four thirds camera will ultimately mean you have the full frame equivalent of a 70 to 200 millimeter. Now this is important to bear in mind because you're never going to get the field of view that you might expect when you're working with full frame and micro four thirds cameras in tandem. my first logical decision was to look into wide lenses and which would be the best for the studio. We did a lot of talking head shoots and video podcasts that had a static wide camera. The wide was a constant need for the studio, so my choice started here. I wanted to do away with the need for lens adapters and go with the native mount, which would be in micro four thirds. And this would ultimately stop any double booking that might happen with mount adapters being used on location and in the studio at the same time. My research led me to a mid-tier lens, which would be the Olympus M Zuko 9-18mm Micro Four Thirds lens, which is ultimately an 18-36mm full-frame equivalent. Now, at the time of recording, it was about $600 to $700, or £400 to £500. And this was ideal for getting extra wide when we had sets with multiple people involved. And then if we wanted to, we could go a little tighter all the way up to 18mm, which is effectively 6 36 which is effectively, which is effectively 36 millimeter in a full frame equivalent. And that would be quite useful in say a two person interview. Now, if you were to go all the way out to nine slash 18 millimeters, then you would start to get a little bit of fisheye creeping in there. 
So this setup worked well for a while um, with the studio crew being able to use the 9 to 18 millimeter MFT lenses and the on location crew being able to use some Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lenses, which when full frame is incorporated, they're kind of the same lens. They just have a millimeter missing. There were a couple of downsides that I hadn't accounted for when it comes to the Blackmagic studio cameras though. The 9 to 18 millimeter Olympus lens was nice to have, but the price was reflective of the aperture that you get with it. F.40 to 5.6. Now the studio I had set up with great lighting, but I have to admit, I would not want to deviate from that F4.0. So I would be as wide as possible to try and keep that aperture as wide open as possible because the Blackmagic camera sensors are not that big. And so the amount of light that can hit them is also not that great, which results in quite a dark picture. And in hindsight, I probably would have been better to go for a slightly more expensive lens that has a slightly wider aperture, which is ultimately what I did. So later on, I decided to go for a Panasonic 8 to 12 millimeter F2.8 to 4.0, which is a 16 to 36 millimeter full frame equivalent. Now this lens is dearer. It's a thousand to 1100 bucks or 900 to a thousand pounds, but it suited my setup much better. Getting down to F2.8 was fantastic for the studio and being able to go up to F4.0 in greater lighter settings was also a benefit too. Now, if you know that the focal range you want to use isn't going to change, then that opens up some more options for you to be able to use a fixed lens such as the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 DC DN lens, which is only around 350 to 400 dollars or 300 to 400 pounds. The Panasonic Lumix G14 millimeter F2.5 is also a great lens for the Blackmagic Studio camera, and that's even cheaper at around 200 to 300 dollars or 150 to 200 pounds. Bear in mind that these in full frame equivalent are around 28 to 32 millimeters. So although they're wide, they're not super wide. Hey, if you're enjoying this video and you're finding it pretty damn useful so far, and you think that there's more to come, then you know what you can do. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. You'll get notified when I upload and we can keep working smarter and not harder. Now, the Blackmagic Studio cameras are a little different from other cameras in that they can be remotely controlled from the control room or the gallery. So this brought up another question for me. Do I want to have the ability to control from the gallery or the control room, the zoom, iris and focus? This would prove particularly useful if you had cameras in places where cameramen couldn't really get to uh, at events, or if you didn't have enough cameramen available, then you could control everything from the control room. If you do want to go for that great technological advantage, then you have to go for motorized lenses with the zoom and focus controls, also known as active lenses. There are four approved active lenses for the Blackmagic Studio cameras. And these are the Panasonic Lumix GX Vario 14 to 42 millimeter F3.5 to 5.6, Panasonic Lumix GX Vario 45 to 175 millimeter F4.0 to 5.6, Zoom, the Olympus 12 to 50 millimeter 3.5 to 6.3, and the Olympus 14 to 42 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6. These lenses range from around 200 to 500 dollars, uh, 150 to 400 pounds, and are all controllable by what's called a LANC controller. Now the approved Blackmagic LANC controller for these cameras is the Manfrotto RC Pan Bar EX remote control. It retails for around 300 to 350 dollars or 250 to 300 pounds. But as you can see, these are all lower to mid tier lenses with small apertures. That doesn't mean to say that there aren't other options available for active lenses for the Blackmagic Studio cameras. It's just that they're not approved by Blackmagic as active lenses for these cameras. Other active lenses are normally known as cine servo lenses and are usually seen on big TV sets or feature films. And that's because they usually have a B4 mount. Oh, and these lenses also cost into the tens of thousands. There is a pairing though that does work well and it doesn't break the bank either. That is to use the Canon CNE 18 to 80 T4.4 EF lens with a Metabones EF to Micro Four Thirds Ultra Speed Booster. This Canon lens is a lower budget cine servo lens for ENG style cameras. If we combine the lens's EF mount with a 
Metabones Micro Four Thirds mount adapter, which is rated to work with this lens, then we can link connect the camera and the lens to the control room so that it can be controlled from there or have the cameraman control the zoom, iris and focus from the lamp controller on the tripod itself. Now the CNE 18 to 80 millimeter from Canon ranges from about $4,600 or 4,000 thousand pounds and the Metabones adapter is also around about $650, 600 pounds. So to counteract the eventual forthcoming issues with lighting and over the shoulder cameras needing the tele lenses, I needed to invest in some good tele lenses that could just be used for the studio alone. I didn't want to have to get extra Metabone adapters that also might be used on location cameras. So I wanted to get the best in class micro four thirds lenses in the 12 to 100 millimeter focal range, which would be about 24 to 200 millimeters in the full frame equivalent. And after a lot of research and thought, I actually went for two lenses instead of one. And I'll tell you why. Now the real front runners in micro four thirds lenses are Olympus and Panasonic, due to them being the main camera body makers apart from Blackmagic design. Panasonic do a great Panasonic Lumix G Vario 14 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 power OIS MFT lens, which is about a 28 to 280 millimeter full frame equivalent, which would give a great range of length to work with on the studio cameras. The only downside is that f3.5 to 5.6 aperture. As I pointed out earlier, the Blackmagic Studio cameras need a nice amount of light on the sensor, and that 3.5 aperture just wasn't going to cut it. And if you were to go all the way out to f5.6, it's just not enough light on an already small sensor. The result would not have been workable. You need to find a lens that fits all of your needs, and an all-in-one is great to have, but it's also hard to find at a price point that includes an aperture that can go wide enough to let the right amount of light in to get a good result in your image. So I decided to go for two lenses, both Panasonic's, and these were a 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8, which is a 24 to 70 millimeter f full frame equivalent, and a 35 to 100 millimeter f2.8, which is a 70 to 200 millimeter full frame equivalent. This would give me a range across 24 to 200 millimeters in full frame equivalents, but spread across two lenses. The Panasonic Lumix GX Vario 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 was an obvious choice for me. At f2.8, I could get as much light as I needed on set in the studio onto that Blackmagic camera sensor. And the form factor was great too. At 68 by 74 millimeters and only weighing 305 grams, it's a perfect little bundle. An added bonus to this lens, although not needed in my setup, but for others, is the added image stabilization in it as well. This isn't really necessary, but if you do need to reframe rather quickly, then having OIS could be a lifesaver. The image sharpness at f2.8 is great, and if you open it all the way up to f4.0 at the full focal length, then the corners are still sharp, but just degrading ever so slightly. This lens is a great price for the focal length, aperture, and form factor that it carries, coming in at about $800 to $1,000 or 750 to 900 pounds. It's definitely a mid to high level lens and certainly a contender for one of the best lenses for the Blackmagic Studio cameras. The next and last lens that I ended up buying for the Blackmagic Studio camera was the Panasonic Lumix GX Vario 35 to 100 mm f2.8 power OIS. This would give me the equivalent of a 70 to 200 mm full frame field of view, which meant that I could get really nice bokeh, bokeh uh, in talking headshots. This lens, again, works best at f2.8, which is great for the Blackmagic Studio cameras, and it's incredibly small for a 7200 full frame equivalent lens at only 67 by 100 millimeters. It is heavier than the lens I'd previously just mentioned, at 375 grams, but for a full frame equivalent, that is still light. And bear in mind, this will be on a camera that is predominantly on a dolly or a tripod, so the weight isn't too much of a factor here. The results from this lens are pretty much the same as the 12 to 35 millimeter I just mentioned, both being Lumix GX Vario lenses. It's just a shame that that Lumix 14 to 140 millimeter lens had such a small aperture, otherwise that would have covered both of the focal ranges in these two lenses. The 35 to 100 millimeter f2.8 lens 
retails for around $900 to $1,000 or around 800 to 900 pounds. So onwards and upwards with an arsenal of MFT lenses up their sleeve, my team were now ready and kitted out for both the studio and on location. We knew we had the aperture that we wanted to play with, we knew we had the focal length that we wanted to play with, and the resulting images were great as well. And that's what we're looking for from a lens, right? So use my experience with all of these lenses that I tried with the Blackmagic Studio cameras and save yourself some time and money and get better results quicker than what I did. This selection was born from years of research and frustration, trying different lenses, and ultimately you can therefore rely on my recommendations because I have tried them for years and this is the resulting list that I've come up with. This allowed me to have a range of shot options across the Blackmagic Studio cameras, which ultimately are a great camera with some of the best lenses that I could find to work with them. In total, that is five lenses for three cameras and it comes in at around about $5,000 or about 3,500 pounds. But they are five lenses that I trust to give me the results that I need. As I said at the beginning, investing in your glass, in your lenses, is a far better choice than constantly updating the camera body because camera bodies, they don't change that much, but your lenses, they make a real difference. So investing now in your lenses and getting the best camera body that you can with the remainder of your budget will really go much further than getting the best high-end camera body right now. Now I hope this has helped for you to make an informed decision about the Blackmagic Studio camera and which lenses to get for it. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, then you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so that you know the next time that I upload and we'll keep working smarter, not harder, because that's what we do at DigiPro Tips and I'll see you in the next video.